Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams, for another episode of New Horizons, the daily podcast and radio ministry of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia. What a joy it is to be able to dive deep into God's Word with you today and to uh, just see what God has to share with us through His Word today. I want to encourage you, if you would like more information about Flat Creek Baptist Church, please join our website, flatcreekchurch.net. You can find all the information you need there about the church, um, who we are, where we are, what time we worship, and how to give. And everything you give uh, to the new Horizons podcast and radio ministry, 100% of that goes to support this ministry and to keep the gospel going forward on the airwaves. We are so thankful to be able to uh, continue looking at God's word with you and continue talking about this issue of the persecuted church in Afghanistan and around the world. I've been sharing with you this all week long that there are, are cries for prayer all over social media, all over Christian websites saying, pray for us in Afghanistan right now. We need to pray. Church, I'm telling you right now, if you're a pastor, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ in Afghanistan. Not just there, but around the world, Christians are being persecuted on a daily basis basis and we need to pray. I, I've, I've given you a call to prayer the last few days, a prayer for boldness, a prayer for protection, a prayer for unity, that, that the persecuted church in the face of the enemy, they might link arms, not be afraid, not be ashamed, and stand boldly proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ in the face of their persecutors, that they might be unified and that we might be unified with them in prayer. Friends, listen, we might not be there on the ground. We might not be in the face of the persecutor. We might not have a machine gun at our foreheads. We, we might not be hiding in a cave today seeking to, to, to make sure our families are safe today. But, but here's what we can do. We can join them in prayer and it should grieve our heart that we see our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world being persecuted. And, and I'll tell you who else we need to pray for. We need to pray for the persecutor. We need to pray that the persecutor might come to a saving knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ, that somehow through the middle of all this that's going on, the message of Christ might grip their hearts and they might be saved. Friends, that's the fourth prayer call. The fourth prayer call is for awakening. Awakening. Now, when I say awakening, what do I mean by that? Well, there, there's a, a, a word that floats around in the church, and sometimes we, we mistake in this word for awakening. We, we in the American church speak of revival. We want to see a great revival. Well, let me remind you, dear brother and sister, that, that revival cannot be experienced by a lost world. They might reap some of the benefits of revival, but you cannot revive that which has never been vived. Revival is for the believer. Revival is for the church. What the world needs, the lost world needs, is awakening. The lost world needs to be brought from the deadness of their spiritual life to walk in the newness of life with Christ. They need to be born again. They need to be raised truly from the dead. And so what we need to pray right now for the church in Afghanistan and the church around the world is that through us in the face of our persecutors, we might actually see God move in such a way that people are saved. Friends, listen to me. This is one of the, this is one of the mysteries of the gospel. And this is one of the mysteries of the Bible that when God's people are persecuted, somehow, some way, it actually leads to the deliverance of sinful men. Isn't that amazing? I mean, here's what you expect throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament, the Israelites are heavily persecuted in Egypt, in slavery. But what happens? They multiply. They multiply so much, they become a threat to Pharaoh, and he decides what? To kill every firstborn male. But then we know that one of those male children is Moses, and he ultimately leads them out of deliverance through the mighty hand of God. And we see this type of, 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 of idea throughout the Old Testament. That then we get to the New Testament, and we see the church. 
And what you, what you expect to happen with the disciples is this. The, the, the moment that Jesus dies is buried in a tomb, you expect the disciples to go home, go back fishing, go back to the tax collector's booth, go back to doing what they were doing before they met the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you expect. But three days later, Jesus rises from the dead and what? They multiply. The people of God under persecution in the Old Testament multiplied and the people of God in the New Testament, the church under persecution, they multiply. And then you come into the book of Acts and what we see across the book of Acts is what? That as they are persecuted, the numbers actually grow. If you look in Acts chapter 7 and chapter 8, you are reminded of the story of Stephen. Stephen is the first Christian martyr. He's a young man. He's full of grace. He's full of the Holy Spirit. He's brought before the mighty Sanhedrin, that same body that put Jesus to death, that same body that had flogged the disciples. And here's young Stephen. And he is threatened. We will kill you. We will, we will destroy you. We will beat you. We will persecute you. And Stephen stands up and says, you stiff-necked generation, you have uncircumcised hearts. You have uncircumcised ears. You were always resisting the Holy Spirit as your ancestors did. So do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They even killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous ones, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law under the direction of angels, and yet you have not kept it. Stephen boldly proclaims the name of Christ in front of of the Sanhedrin. And what happens? The Bible says, when they heard these things, they were enraged in their heart. They gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled by the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He saw, the, he saw God's glory with Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They screamed at the top of their voices. They covered their ears. Together they rushed against him. They threw him out of the city. They stoned him. And witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They were stoning Stephen. He called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down, cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And saying this, he fell asleep. And in the midst of persecution, as he's dying, he says, Lord, do not charge this to their account. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 8, 1, Saul agreed with putting him to death. On that day, severe persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout the land of Judea and Samaria. Devout men, devout men buried Stephen and mourned deeply over him. Saul, however, was ravaging the church. He would enter house after house, drag off men and women, and put them in prison. So those who were scattered went on their way preaching the message of good news. That, that's not what you expect. You expect Stephen has died. Persecution has come. Saul is ravaging the church. You would expect them to say, you know what? It's not worth it. We're going to go home. We're going to be quiet. But what? Those who were scattered went on their way preaching the good news. Friends, what the world needs today is awakening. And through our persecution, God might just bring it. Could it be that in Afghanistan, that there might be some bold witnesses there? That as they're being scattered, they just go on their way preaching the good news. And could it be that some Islamic terrorist comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ through them? Let's pray that it happens. Would you join me in prayer today for awakening across the world in persecuted lands? Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We pray for awakening of the dead. That God, you might reach down into their hearts and save them from their sins as those Believers, those brothers and sisters in Christ, continue to boldly proclaim the message of Jesus. Father, we love you. We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I look forward to seeing you next time on New Horizons. God bless.